Hi everyone, welcome to my ST10 Plus and ST10 Standard uh, <clears throat> Unbrick tutorial. Um, this is a re-upload from the one I did yesterday. A lot of people said they had problems with uh, just following along. <clears throat> I'm going to try to go a little slower here uh, and hope for the best. This time I do have a camera on the controller so you can see that. Um, so hopefully this goes a little smoother. Uh, first things first, as you can see, my, my remote is on uh, and is actually fully functioning. Um, so what I'm going to do is turn it off. Make sure during this process your remote is off and the battery is plugged in. Off and remote plugged in and your remote should not be connected to the computer at this time. Now from here, when you notice you grab one of the download in the description or from the form, you'll notice you'll have a bunch of these files that are on my screen here on this uh, right side. These are the files you're going to get. The first thing that you are going to need to do to install the specific drivers that allow the controller to communicate with the computer is uh, you need to disable driver signing enforcement. I will post a link on this uh, into the, or into the video, video uh, description and uh, there's a link on there in a tutorial on how to do this. Um, it's kind of different for each computer so therefore uh, I'd like to just rather post a link to it. It's, it is fairly simple though. So Once you get the dri uh, driver signing enforcement disabled you want to run through and install the drivers. Uh, so personally I'm on Windows 7 as you can see I've included Windows 10 plus 8 and 7 drivers if the Windows 10 and 8 drivers do not work for you during the install process or you're flashing the remote, uh, try to install the Windows 7 drivers. The uh, Windows 7 drivers and uh, that will probably work for you. I'm on Windows 7 personally so I'm going to choose the Windows 7 driver. I'm on 64 bit so I'll choose x64. If you are on 32 bit choose x68. So I'm going to run DP INST click through here. It's going to ask you, cannot verify the publisher, just choose an install driver anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to try to make this as easy as I can for you guys. I know a lot of people were having problems before. Unfortunately, I can only make it so easy. Here you go. It asked me again. Would you like to install this driver anyway? Choose yes. Uh, it's um, you know it's a great thing that we even got this working. So uh, it, a big thanks to a guy named uh, Captain Throwback. He did a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of work on this. Uh, he's really the one who made all this possible. So. Um, I appreciate him a lot, and uh, I've spent, unfortunately, a little over a hundred bucks trying to get this to work. So I've been, you know, up and down emotional roller coaster here with breaking them and fixing them and then breaking them again. Uh, install this driver software anyway. Choose it again. But yeah, so eventually we got it working, and this is where we're at. So. This tutorial will be for the ST10 Plus and the standard um, because the actual way to install TWRP is exactly the same. The only difference is you have to choose a different file during the, the uh, TWRP flashing process. As you can see, it's asking me again install this driver software. This installs all of the Spectrum uh, CPU drivers. In this remote, it is a Spectrum SC8825 CPU, uh, so that's why we're installing the driver, so this processor can communicate with the computer's processors. I'm working on a very slow machine. In my first tutorial, I worked on my uh, editing machine and stuff like that, so you'll notice this tutorial will be probably longer because this computer is from 2007, I think. It's an old laptop, uh, so just keep that in mind. So there you go, my drivers are installed. I just choose finish, and I should be all set. 
Now, next thing, now that you have your drivers installed, um, your remote is off with the battery plugged in. Uh, let me just click. I'm just changing something in my end click. Renaming these to make these a little easier. Okay. So now that you have your, like I said, your remote plugged in, uh, control or your remote, your remote battery plugged in, uh, the remote off and the remote unplugged from the computer. So all you want to happen is your battery plugged in and the remote off. You want no cable. You 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 do not want a cable going from your ST10 to your computer as of right now. Next thing we are going to do is open up the SPD upgrade tool. It's included in the download. Okay. Open up that folder. There's going to be a million files in here. All right. And the only file that you're going to be interested in is the one that says research download application. It's got a picture of a chip on it with some arrows. That's what you're going to want to choose. Double click and open it up. You should get this. Okay. From here, you want to choose the top left gear icon. The very top left with the, the big gear icon there. Choose it. Find where you extracted the download files. And you're going to want to choose this one right here, wherever you extracted it. It's on my desktop, but wherever you pull all these files out of the download. This is a, it's called 4.0.0. Uh, wait, 4.0.047.p1.140619.8076d.pac. This is the file that you're going to need to choose after you choose the gear icon in the software here. So I'm going to choose the gear, find this .pac file, which I have on my desktop. You will have it in a different location, wherever you wherever you decide to put it. Double click it. It should load into the software and text should appear up top. CP8076D with a bunch of numbers next to it and dots should appear. At this point you'd like to choose the two smaller gear icons. Choose select all files once. This select all files box. Choose it once and then choose it again. This will remove all the checks except for FDL1 and FDL2. Those two will be checked. At this point, you want to choose boot, B-O-O-T, underscore, I-M-G. Want to check that check box. Then put your mouse back up to the top. Choose the options tab and make sure that repartition is not checked. You do not want a repartition checked. Going back to the main page tab, you're now going to want to uh, hover over the boot underscore IMG logo or text right there. Scroll over. As you can see, there's a little line break right here, and then it shows the directory. Um, it shows a, a, a directory, I should say. It'll be different for all of you. You're just going to scroll over in the directory and double click over on the right side right before the line break. So I'm going to choose right around here. You're going to want to double click. So one, two. And now you should get a uh, like a blue highlighted text. And next to that, there's a little tiny box with three dots on it. You want to choose this box. And now, wherever you put the download files, you need to navigate to uh, that directory or that place on your computer. So I extracted the download files to desktop. So I'm going to choose. I'm going to scroll down until you find unbrick twrp. And this is what you want. It should be 9.89 megabytes. 
you want to choose the file and choose open. Now, from here you can choose the OK button at the bottom. Next part of this is to choose the start button. Make sure your remote is still unplugged and choose the start downloading button. The button will turn gray along with the other two gears. At this point we're going to move over to the remote. And sorry for all the crazy bad uh, views here. It's the best I can do. I'm in my kitchen. So you can see my remote is off. Now you take your USB cable. I have a personally a very small one. This is it. Uh, really it's recommended that you get a larger one uh, but this is what I have to work with as of now. As also what you'll need for this part of the tutorial is a small something very small. This is for example a very small Allen key. I believe one millimeter. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is just grab anything. I mean be a toothpick, it could be a, a stick from outside, I mean it could be absolutely anything, but it has to be small enough to fit inside of the headphone jack on the bottom right side of the controller as you can see, I believe you can see this right, yep, push this in all the way to the back and it'll stop, then give it a little more force, just a little bit, and you should feel a click. That click is the button that you want to choose and hold during this process. Next thing, make sure again that your remote is off, battery is plugged in. I'm going to plug in just this side of the cable into the computer. Not the side that goes into the remote, just the computer side. I'm going to plug it in here. Okay. Now here comes the tricky part you are going to want to take your tool push the button in inside the headphone jack and hold the button while you're holding the button you want to plug in the cable going from the computer you want to keep holding this button at all times until the software on your computer says finished done or completed one of the three you will see this in a second when I plug in the remote if you would like just watch the video a few times, watch this process over till you get the hang of it, and then you can try it. So here we go, I'm going to take my Allen key, which is what I have for a tool. I am going to push it in to the headphone jack and choose the and, uh, hold the button. And now, I am going to look on the computer the second I plug it in. And I'm going to keep holding this uh, USB cable in there until the process has completed. It will say passed on the computer when it is done. So here we go, plugging in right now. Here we go. Now it's uh, doing its thing, downloading, boot that IMG. Keep holding it, keep holding it. Keep holding it, keep holding it, keep holding it. There we go, past, finish. Now we can let go of the button and unplug the remote. Okay, bring you guys a little closer here now. Okay, so the next thing, you wanna unplug the battery on the remote unplug and then plug it back in flip your remote to the on position you should now get TWRP on the screen as you can see team and recovery project comes up this is good at this point go on to your computer and choose the stop button and close the software. At this point in time, you're in a good spot. You have your computer, or computer, I mean your remote, booted at least. 
And next thing is we're going to put the original firmware from your remote on the device. This is where it becomes uh, very tricky. You want to make sure 100% that you choose the correct update for your remote. If you would like to look on my screen quick for a minute, please. In the download, I have included ST10 Plus and ST10 Standard files. If you have a ST10 Plus, this next step I'm going to tell you about, uh, you want to load the ST10 Plus on the remote. If you have an ST10 Standard, you want to load the ST10 Standard file on the remote. So I have an ST10 Plus here. So I'm going to, during this next process, I'm going to teach you, take the ST10 Plus file. To complete this process, you simply have to take your USB cable, sorry, phone falls, but it doesn't, okay, and you're going to want, while you're in TWRP, it will probably ask you when you first boot it up, it may ask, would you like to swipe to enable system modifications? And yes, that is 100% fine. You can swipe to enable, and you should get to this screen right here. And that is good. When you're at this screen, you just want to plug in your device to the computer. Your computer should connect. And you should now be able to see your ST10 files on the computer, on the SD card. Now, I've had one other person have a problem with this. I'm going to delete these files. These are from an old tutorial. I'm just going to delete these. We can ignore this. Now, I've heard other people somehow are having problems with when you plug in the remote in this TWRP thing here. Um, that the driver does not install and they can't see their SD card. If this is the case and you are hard bricked where the device will not turn on and communicate normally with the computer, then you need to take the SD card out of the remote. The SD card is located behind the battery in the remote behind a little steel door. It's impossible to miss. When you take the battery out, it's sitting right in front of you. You need to take this SD card out and you need to put it in a SD card reader, something that can read the SD card without the device being plugged in. Now at that point, once you have an once you have it maybe plugged into a device, if you if if you don't get any connection with the computer via the cable, like I said, take the card out, put it in a card reader, plug it into the computer, and you should work just like and you should be able to follow the, the tutorial. Uh, uh, as as I'm doing it now. Once you either have your remote plugged in, your files are up, or you have an SD card reader and it's plugged in, you should get this. You should be able to maybe browse the files on your SD card. Like mine says ST10 Plus Portable Media Player. On my computer option here, I'm going to choose it and open up SD card. Like I said, if you have put it in a card reader, it'll just say probably a removable disk, but just choose it. Uh, and then you should get, you know, this folder here on the SD card that has DSIM, FPV video, download, Android, lost, DIR. And this is good. This is exactly what you need. This is where you need to transfer the correct file. Make sure you do, okay? If you have a ST10 Plus, drag in the ST10 Plus file in here and let go and it will copy. If you have a ST10 standard you drag the ST10 standard file into this folder SD card here and let it copy. This is the only difference between uh, the ST10 plus and ST10 standard installs. Now that my file is copied, it should be 115 megabytes for ST10 Plus, and we'll check for ST10 Standard. You do not have to put this on the device, I'm just checking file size for you, for people who have to do the ST10 Standard. So this is all just 
to uh, just a check for me. You do not need to. You only need to transfer the file that is for your device. But I've heard people somehow have corrupted files sometimes, so make sure the sizes are exact. And the ST10 standard file should be 111 megabytes. I do not need the standard file, so I'm going to delete it because I have an ST10 Plus. So there you go. Now you have the file on there. If you used a card reader, take the SD card out of the card reader, put it back into the remote, and continue with this tutorial. If you have the cable plugged in and you transferred that way, same thing, you're just fine, just keep following the tutorial. Next step, you are going to want to unplug the remote if you have the cable plugged in. Okay, your computer should disconnect. At this point, you will probably have a black screen on the SD10 Plus or ST10 standard. This is okay. It's simply because the um, a TWRP has a locking feature, as you can see, it has the lock icon. You just want to swipe to unlock, and you should be all set. Let's see if I can get this just a little closer for you guys. I don't want to make it too dark, though, or too light. Here we go. Now, since you put the file on the SD card, we're simply just going to choose the install button up here at the top left, well, the orientation sideways, but you want to choose install. You get a list of files, as you can see. You are going to want to choose the st10plus.zip or the st10standard.zip, depending on which device you have. If you have a standard, you should have st10standard.zip. If you have an st10 plus, there should be st10 plus in there. Choose this zip file. At this point, you are going to get on the top in blue, it will say, this operation may install incompatible software and render your device unstable. This is okay. No problem. It is made for this device. This is a warning that is always brought up in TWRP. But we do have the correct firmware on here, which is good. All you do is swipe to flash. Your device will go through a bunch of, you know, weird text that you're probably not going to understand. That's fine. Also, it will probably lock up on the right boot.img2 partition forward slash boot. This is totally fine. It is still doing its job. Leave it be. Even though the progress bar is done, you will know when it's completely done because at the bottom of the text it will say dot 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 done. At this point you are actually fully flashed and done. So we're going to wait for this to happen. Should just take a few seconds. Looks like it says dot 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 done. That's good. Now you do not, do not choose reboot system and do not choose wipe cache do not choose these options choose the back arrow down at the bottom left here I chose that you get this back again you want to choose the arrow again to go back now you should be back at this screen at this point you want to choose reboot and do not choose ST10 flight mode you want to choose recovery the ST10 flight mode is for the standard TWRP install video that will be coming. This video will cover uh, an already working device and how to install TWRP on an already working ST10 or ST10 standard. So don't worry about that button as of right now. Just choose recovery, the recovery options right here. Choose it and you should be all set. Mm -hmm. You should have flashed your stock firmware and your remote should be good to go and you should be ready to fly. Let's see here. And there we go. We have our flight mode back. So if you have any questions or comments, 
please let me know on the forum or on this YouTube video. Later videos today will be standard TWRP install for already working devices. And next video will be how to install root on your device. So, have fun flying. If you have any questions, be sure to please let me know on any way you can. You can also send me a personal message if you like. Hi everyone, this is a update onto the original video um, where if you do have bars on your screen or you can't use your touch screen for some reason or you can't see the screen, this is a method um, to uh, flash stack recovery without needing the screen. Um, everything up to the TWRP flash is the same. So you should only be watching this vid this and the end of this video if you have gone through the process of opening the research download tool and holding the button in the headphone jack and doing that whole flash process. Okay? When you're at that point, right, where you just flash that unbrick TWRP, if you do not have a screen, you should be coming to this part of the video right now. This part will show you how to use the TWRP without needing the screen on the remote. It's very simple. First things first, you're going to want to download and install these two things. I'm going to show you how to do this. To install a minimal ADB and fastboot setup, just double click it. It will be in the description of the video also with the download. Run or whatever your computer says. You want to choose just next, 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 next. And if you want to create a desktop icon, you can. I like to, so I'm going to do that. Choose next and install. You do not want to choose launch minimal ADB. You want to unclick this and choose finish. Now, if you choose to have an icon, you will have an icon over here. Next thing, the USB underscore driver. This is where you should have your remote at this point if you flash the TWRP with the research download tool from before in this tutorial. You should have TWRP now. Even though when you turn it on, you get the bars or you get black screen or something, that's fine. There's no problem with that. Okay? but we still have to be able to uh, you know, access the device and update the firmware. So now what you're going to want to do is turn on the device with the battery plugged in and then plug in the USB cable into your controller. What should happen is uh, let's see, let me put, plug mine in here. find the right place to plug it in. There we go. Okay. So I just plugged my device in. Alright, so the ST10 should be plugged in. Now, you're going to want to type to your start menu. Go to your start menu. I'm on Windows 7, so I have the start menu on the bottom left. For Windows 10 or 8, you must figure out how to get to Device Manager. There's probably a search button down on your taskbar down here on Windows 10 or 8 that has a search, like a magnifying glass icon. You choose that, and you should be able to search Device Manager. And you should get this. This is what you're going to want to open. Device Manager. should look like this when you open it. Okay. Now, as you can see, you're going to have an option on here that says ST10 with an a orange triangle. If you do not have this orange triangle in ST10, then you should have an Android composite ADB interface without, without the yellow triangle. That means you already have the drivers that we're going to install installed so you can skip this part but for people who have the yellow triangle on ST10 
Okay, this is how to install the driver. If you have ADB composite or Android composite ADB interface without a yellow triangle, you can skip this step. But most people are probably not going to have drivers. So I'm going to show you how to install these. In the download, there should also be a USB underscore driver folder. Okay, that's good. Put this anywhere that you know where it is when you, you know, extract the files. Now you're going to want to right click inside of device manager, your ST10 with the triangle on it, choose update driver software, now choose browse my computer for driver software, then choose let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer, choose the select all devices, it should be already chose. And then choose next and choose have disk. Then I come up with a little box. Now you want to choose browse. And you're going to want to find the USB driver folder wherever you've put it. If you put it in, you know, documents, it'll be in there. If I put mine on the desktop. Here's the USB underscore driver folder. Open it and double click the Android underscore Win USB file. When you do, this box will come back and choose OK. It should have uh, the USB driver folder in the text box here. Choose OK. This will come up. OK, you get three options. You want to choose Android Composite ADB interface. Choose this with one click and then choose next. Installing this device driver is not recommended because Windows cannot can verify it's compatible with your hardware. This is fine. It is absolutely compatible. Choose the yes button. Installing driver software. And now when it says successfully updated your device. Choose close and now you'll notice you have Android composite ADB interface without the yellow triangle and no ST10 with the exclamation point triangle. This is great. You have the driver installed now. Now it's simple as putting in two commands to get your device back to stock. You can close the device manager, open up minimal ADB and fastboot that we installed before, double click or wherever you put it. From here, don't worry, it looks like scary buttons, don't worry. I want you to simply type ADB devices, just like that, ADB devices, and choose enter. It will say daemon not running starting now. And daemon started successfully, and you should see the device plugged in. This means the computer is communicating when it says device and a number next to it. You can do it again just for good measure. I like to. ADB devices again, enter and list of devices attached there you go we got a number and a device that is the ST10 now next thing we're gonna type a command that you cannot mess up at all the text has to be perfect to the point where um, make sure you do not have to choose backspace okay so simply just type this a d b space shell s h E L L. Enter. You should get this weird, crazy looking squiggly with a hashtag and an arrow and a bracket and a six and an N. This is why you need to make sure you type this next command ex extremely. Ex ex just make sure you type it, you know, absolutely perfectly. Okay? But you want to pause here before we go any further and start typing this command. You want to absolutely make sure that you have your correct firmware file on the ST10 SD card. If you do not have these files on the SD card, you need to put them on. To do this, you should be able to just go to your computer or however you do this in your Windows. I'm using Windows uh, 7, so this is how I do it. And underneath, next to you, local disk C, there's my ST10 here. I can double click this, double click the SD card, and this is inside the SD card, all the files you need. 
Well, in the download, there's going to be an ST10 Plus, an ST10 Standard folder. If you have an ST10 Plus, you want to choose this file and drag it in. If you have an ST10 Standard board, you want to drag the ST10 Standard in. I personally have an ST10 Plus. So you can click and drag this file directly into the SD card and let it copy. Once done, we're going to go back to the black window over there with the squiggly line and the hashtag. And we're going to type, type a specific command that's going to take that file and install it on the remote. Therefore, you should be able to reboot and bam, you should have your absolute 100% good remote ready to go. Now that it's in the SD card, as you can see, okay, you can just close. If you do not have an SD card inside of the SD10 remote, or you are having trouble installing the drivers where it does not show the SD10 remote, okay, what you need to do, for example, like if I, you know, if it does not say SD10 Plus or does not say SD10 here in your computer, you need to take the SD card out and put it in a SD card reader. The SD card is located behind the battery in the ST10 and ST10 Plus models. Take that little card out, put it in a SD card reader, and plug it into your computer. And you follow the same steps. Just put the ST10 Plus or ST10 standard file into the reader. Okay or whichever device, whichever firmware you need. So I, so let's well, let's assume I had a, an SD card reader in here right now. Instead of saying ST10 Plus, it will probably say just a removable disk, and that's fine. Open it, you should get this. Okay, all your, with the file with the lost DIR, Android, DSIM, TV video. Take the, firm, the correct firmware for your device, drag it in, let it copy, close out, put that SD card back inside of the remote and now you can continue with this tutorial from there. So now that you have ADB shell open here and you have this squiggly hashtag arrow bracket 6n thing you want to type this command with zero errors zero. If you uh, have to choose backspace it'll show a weird command and that's okay. For example if I was to start to type the command I typed it wrong. Oh god, I typed something wrong. Press backspace. It makes All you have to do is press enter and it'll go back to the stock command line. And uh, from here, you're going to want to type it exactly as I say it to prevent, like I said, anything from messing up. Type TWRP space install. Oh, I actually messed up right here. Just going to hit enter. So I'll type it again, TWRP space install space whatever version you have uh, for either the ST10 or the ST standard. Standard. If you have the ST10 standard in your, in your uh, SD card, type ST10 standard. If you have ST10 plus, you type ST10 plus dot zip here. Always add the dot .zip at the end, though. st10plus.zip or st10standard.zip, depending on which one you put in the SD card. Choose Enter, and your device uh, or your screen should show this. It should show like a bunch of random words. Don't worry about it. That's perfect. It might lock up on right boot.img to partition forward slash boot. That's fine again. Just uh, I'll let it load. It's still doing its thing. You will be done and 100% uh, completed when at the bottom it'll say, I believe, uh, it'll, it, it, I believe it just says done. Uh, there's uh, something else before it. But as soon as it says done, you are all set. Uh, at that point, you should be able to unplug your controller from the computer, switch the remote off, and turn the remote back on. And you should be back to a normal standard OS. Um, you can also try this as I'm going to do right now. You can close out of this window once it says done, which it does. It says random offset and done processing. Close it. 
open up minimal ADB in fast food again and just type ADB space reboot. And this does the same thing as just unplugging the remote, turning it off and on. Just in case you don't want to do that, you can type ADB reboot and you'll be all set. So have fun flying. Any questions, let me know.